everyone. Welcome to International Studies on Miracular Architecture. In this lecture, we are going to learn about disaster mitigation from vernacular architecture. We will begin with the context of disaster in the world generally and in Indonesia specifically. Then, I will show you how vernacular society responds this to disaster, a lesson learned from Indonesia's vernacular architecture. Tectonic plates are gigantic segments of pieces of earth crust. Tectonic plates are not fixed but move, and when they come into contact, tectonic plates form either divergent, transform, or convergent boundaries. Such boundaries are highly susceptible to earthquake and volcanic eruptions. Tectonic plates are defined as major and minor plates depending on their size. The world consists of seven major tectonic plates, which cover nearly 95% of Earth's surface. Ring of Fire is a seismically active belt of earthquake epicenters, volcanoes, and tectonic plate boundaries, spanning up to 40,000 kilometers from Pacific Island, Indonesian archipelago going to the north to the Philippines, Japan, and then to the western coast of North America and the Andes Mountain. Most of the world's earthquake and approximately 75% of world volcanoes occur within this ring of fire. Indonesian archipelago located in the ring of fire belt. This puts the islands constantly at risk of earthquake, landslide, floods, and tsunamis and volcanic eruptions. One of the 12 world's largest volcanic eruptions is Mount Tambora on the northern coast of Sumbawa Island, Indonesia. It exploded in 1851 and the eruption lasting up to three years. Many vernacular society have learned how to live with natural environment, including hazards. They have the knowledge of how to minimize disaster risk and hand it down to the next generations. But rapid urbanization, industrialization, and globalization, as well as the lack of awareness and documentation, has made vernacular society forgot the vernacular knowledge of disaster mitigation. As a result, each year, Indonesia's National Disaster Management Agency recorded an increase of disaster, 3,800 in 2019, 4,600 in 2020, and 5,400 in 2021 with building damage up to 158,000. In this lecture, we will look at some knowledge of vernacular society in responding to natural hazards, especially earthquake, which occur in many forms, song, poetry, and in the physical form of vernacular architecture. In Aceh province, there is an island in the west called Simele Island. They have warned people of the danger of tsunami, known as Hmong in their language. The warning is distributed among themselves and is handed down to the younger generation in the form of poetry called Nandong. The poetry contains warnings as follows. If the earthquake is strong, followed by low tide, hurry up and find a higher place that is Hmong. And in Mentawai Island, West Sumatra province, the warning of earthquake is handed down in the form of song lyrics. The earthquake is known as Teteo in their language. The song is about thunder, landslide, and destruction. The knowledge of disaster mitigation also found in Indonesia's vernacular architecture along the Ring of Fire Belt. The ones that will be discussed here is those of Nias in North Sumatra, Bagi in South Sumatra, Sunda, Java, and Sumba. Nias Island is located in between two plates, the Indian, Australian, and Eurasian plates. So the island often experiences earthquake with a high magnitude. From seismic data on March 2005, the island was affected by a devastating earthquake that caused many houses to collapse and more than a thousand people died, and thousands more were injured. 
But in the 2005 earthquake, Dia's vernacular architecture is still standing strong considering the earthquake that was fe felt by the community in the city is very high. This is of course related to the adaptation strategy of NIA's community in dealing with the earthquake disaster. All NIA's vernacular architecture are built on stilts with gigantic wooden pillars placed on top of a rock. The main structural system is like a box placed on top of the ground, so the box itself has to be self-supporting. Each structural component bounded in a way to form a unity. The bottom area of the pillars is strengthened by a diagonal support structure as bracing. This bracing support structure is also found in the top at the rough roof structure. The function of this support are to counteract the earthquake lateral forces. Nia's vernacular house plan is symmetrical. Whether it's consciously or unconsciously, the symmetrical shape actually makes it easier to spread the load that occur in the building, both horizontally and vertically. The symmetry of this plan, the overall shape, the structural and construction system makes Nia's vernacular architecture highly earthquake resistant. From the northern part, now we look at South Sumatra, which is located close to the subduction zone, precisely along the southwest side. So the area is also a high risk area to disaster. The seismic condition of South Sumatra are influenced by the activity of collision of two plates, also the Indian Australian Ocean Plate and Eurasian Plate. In the southern part of Sumatra, there is a buggy vernacular house. It is a rectangular wooden house on stilts. Different from their neighbor, the Nias people, who use these diagonal bracings in the bottom, buggy house mitigate earthquake by creating flexible building behavior against the direction of the earthquake force. The concept of box with a wood knockdown system without nails is used in the buggy house. The box used to be square, 6 by 6 meters, 7 by 7 meters, or 8 by 8 meters, with a symmetrical column uh, structure configuration. But nowadays, there was an addition to the house form, such as upper terrace or room addition at the back. The most essential part is in the kitao, the horizontal beams connecting the box and the pillars below. The connection, the kitao, is a roller pedestal, function to reduce earthquake forces. Another unique feature of this house is that they do not use solid rock. Instead, they use crushed stone or cobblestone, compiled and slightly Im immersed into soil as foundation of the house. This creates a certain elasticity for the house when earthquake happen. Thus, each structural element plays a role in maintaining the position of other elements, allowing the structure to move simultaneously. When vibration occurs, the roller functions to reduce a force which will rotate on the holder, so that vibration reaching the upper structure will be reduced. The lightweight upper structure will then make it easier for this mechanism to work. This means that buggy house has fulfilled the principles of elasticity in earthquake resistance construction. It is interesting to note that these vernacular society have known roller support system long before the technology is developed. Nowadays, the roller pedestal is commonly used in bridge construction to create elastic joinery, which functions as an earthquake reducing agent. From Sumatra, we move to the island of Java, which is located adjacent to the active arc subduction zone, precisely on the south side of the island. So the area on the south side of the island will often be shaken by earthquake and landslides. One of the area of the south is where the Sundanese community reside. We will look at an old vernacular village called Kampung Naga that still exists today. They are able to maintain their unique culture until now. The village is located in the valley. 
It is close to the main road connecting West Java and Central Java, so the road is quite busy. To reach Kampung Naga from the main road, one must go down hundreds of stairs, which also means to get to the main road, one must go up hundreds of stairs. As you can see in the picture, the village is located in the middle between river and mountain. Its left and right is rice field. This location is specific to the Sundanese culture. They believe mountain is where God resides. It is also the future, life after death, and heaven. While the river what is water, it's evil, death, hell, and lots of bad spirit. Where, and the middle is where humans live. The house is lined towards the water in accordance to the contour of the land. The Sundanese ideology respects nature and wants to live in harmony with nature. They have a rule that related to the capacity of the ground to accommodate human activity, meaning they restrict the number of the house and people that can live in the village. They also have a unique recycling food culture. It is a closed cycle, so there is very little waste. Sundanese are rice farmers. After harvesting the rice, unhulled rice is pounded at Saung Lisung. The bran is thrown into the pond. The fish consume waste from Saung Lisung and toilets. As we can see in the picture, Saung Lisung and toilets are built on, on, on the pond. The villagers caught, caught and eat the fish. When the villagers use toilet, the fish then consume human waste. So this cycle is a simple method of recycling similar to that in current technology. And the other interesting thing about Kampung Naga village is how they channel water. Clean water from the Naga village come a channel through bamboo pipes. Water from the southern part of the village is for drinking and cooking. Some of the water flowing through the rice field goes to filtering process used for ritual ablution or wudu prior to Islamic prayers and for toilet and bathing. Apart from uh, the function of breeding fish, the pond also serves as natural septic tank for human waste. Cleaning, bathing, and toilet needs are done in the toilets. The sewage flows to the pond underneath. Some of the water flowing into these ponds also comes from the unfiltered surf surface water. This thinking sustains environment from landslide, climate change, and reduce the impact of natural hazards. In this sense, this ideology related to sustainable thinking. For the earthquake, the Sundanese houses are lightweight. The walls are thin, made from bamboo weaves and thin woods. The concept of box also present in this village. The box is placed on top of stone. There are no stilts. The lightweight house box can be moved to another place, as we can see in the picture. The moving of the house is a gotong royong process. Villagers come together, so the structure of the box is in unity. When the earthquake happens, the house can shake more freely in different directions. In this sense, the Sundanese vernacular architecture of Kampung Naga is highly disaster resistant. The Sundanese neighbor, the Javanese people, has a different response to earthquake. The response is apparent in Joglo house type. It is a rectangular wooden house type with tower-like roofs. Joglo is commonly used in central Java. There are many variety of roof shape and dimension. One of them is called Limasan, which we will discuss further towards the end of the lecture. But all Joglo variants have a common structural system. The plants are square or rectangular. The main structure is very specific, which starts from the middle. A four main column called Sokoguru expanded to the left, right, front, and back. The Sokoguru is bound by double beam on top, usually highly decorated, called Tumpang Sari. The weight of the double beams strengthen Joglo structure. The structure of the pillar that surrounds Sokoguru, called Sakaparang, 
follows the main system, symmetrical structural system. Saka Parang has small di smaller dimension than Saka Guru, sir, and serves as pedestal, beam pedestal that support the additional roof structure. The connection system at the bottom of the main structure between Sakaguru and the ground called Umpak, which act as insulating base for the structure above it, and also functions to reduce earthquake vibration in the Sakaguru. Umpak has a trapezoid form, made of stone or cement. Umpak foundation is slightly submerged to withstand the shearing force. Then, the top is given a hole the size of Sakaguru dimension. The connection system at the top of the main structure between Sakaguru, the beam, the, and the roof is a knockdown system with complex three axis XYZ connection that blocks each other. The connection makes the roof act as a counterweight pendulum. So, when the so the building can remain stable when receiving earthquake force. The flexible building behavior of Sakaguru and Umpak act as a lateral load-bearing system arranged symmetrically. The four pillars, the Sakaguru, will bear the same balanced vertical and horizontal loads to reduce the effect of torsion caused by unbalanced loading when the building re receives earthquake forces. This means that Joglo Vernacular House is an earthquake-resistant building. The island of Sumba is last example discussed in this lecture. Because of its location, the island is a high-risk earthquake zone. In the case of Sumba Vernacular architecture, tower-like roof shape is similar to that of Joglo. However, the structural system is completely different. The house is on stilts. The house plan is also square or rectangular with four main columns or pillar. In the middle of the four main wooden pillar, there is a hearth that has to be lit when there is people inside the house. The picture shown here is the Zumbanese community in Welewo village demonstrating the construction of the house through a model. The four main columns or pillars are planted one, one meter below the ground while the other pillars are placed on top of stone. The construction process begins from the center, from the four main pillars. From there, the beams from floor, for, uh, for the floor are made, and then ceiling on top of, of the pillars are made to hang food or, and sacred objects. It is important to note that the ceilings are only placed on top of the pillar without joinery. The Welewo villagers believe that the main pillars have to be pure, free from any kind of wood joinery. From the ceiling, the tower-like roof structure is erected. It is important to note that all wood joinery is flexible. There are no mortise tenon join, only lap join by, bound by rope. The way they knot the rope depends on where and which building component are tied. So there are at least four knot types with three different rope materials, rattan, coconut husk, and jungle root. The roof is itself is like a hat placed on top of the building. The roof then tied by rope made of a weaved coconut husk only at the edge or fringe of the house all the way round. In this sense, the joinery, the knot, and the pillars that is buried one meters in the ground create a unique building response to earthquake. The house can shake in different direction, but is still tied to the ground and, and is still tied by the knot. This demonstration made it clear that the main reason Sumba vernacular house is earthquake resistant it is because the way it's constructed. So, if we look at the example of vernacular architecture above, we can conclude two basic principles that makes Nias, Bagi, Sunda, Java, and Sumba vernacular architecture highly earthquake resistant. The principles are a symmetrical plan of the house and a flexible building behavior in responding to the forces of earthquake. This is done in varied ways 
but we have to see the building behavior as a whole to understand how it stands against the forces of earthquake. We have also learned several knowledge of disaster mitigation from vernacular society that which takes the form of poetry, song, and ideology about how they maintain their environment. So what can we do after we learn disaster mitigation from vernacular architecture? Here is an example of the role of architect in post-disaster reconstruction and why the people in Yogyakarta region shifted from modern house using brick back to Limasan type house in post-disaster reconstruction. On May 2006, an earthquake hit Indonesia in the region of Yogyakarta, in the southern portion of central Java. The village of Nibikan, located less than 10 kilometers from the quake's epicenter, was destroyed. More than 5,000 people died and more than 140,000 homes in the immediate region were damaged. Due to the village location, post-disaster post aid is low. So Eko Prawoto, an architect, artist, and educator, takes the initiative to help the villagers. His mission was not only rebuilding the house, but also rebuilding the community. He saw the wooden binocular house of Limasan, a variant of Joglo, stand stronger against earthquake than the modern brick house. So his design input is to make a modified wooden Limasan structural system. The modification aimed at faster rebuilding process. So after explaining the design and discussion with the villagers and with financial assistance from local newspaper, the villagers of Nibikan, led by community leader Mariono, reconstructed 65 homes in less than 90 days. The new homes are based on vernacular building type, the Limasan house, with innovative modification to keep wooden structures lightweight, but at the same time resistant to future earthquake. The community rebuilt the physical fabric of their environment, which in turn helped to rebuild Gotong Royong or togetherness in this agrarian village. As such, the Nibikan village reconstruction provides an alternative model for post-disaster reconstruction project that demonstrate the enormous positive impact of a grassroots rebuilding process. This project is shortlisted in the Aga Khan Award for Architecture. We have come to the end of this lecture. Throughout the lecture, we have discussed the context of disaster, how vernacular society mitigate disaster embedded in their culture, ideology, and vernacular architecture. And we have also seen the examples of a post-disaster reconstruction project. Hopefully, this lecture can inspire all of us to have a deeper look at disaster mitigation knowledge from vernacular society all over the world and take on the role of architect in rebuilding architecture after disaster with a respect of vernacular tradition. The example shown here is multiple research done in collaboration with many people. The vernacular community of Welewo and Kampung Naga, Construye Identidad of Peru, Marianne Tarotten, Justin Copertino Ubu, Arsitektur Hijau, Pele Wijaya, Takeuchi Ken, and students of architecture Aurelius Aron, Gabriel Mark Hebert Mailakai, and Jovita Christi. Here are some references of the lecture that you might be interested to look further. Thank you. See you in the next lecture.